Okay, great. All right, here we go. So here is it. Here it is. So today is Friday. Like this is the most popping day of the week, I must say. Like remember, every single planet, every single day, it has its own energy coming through. But when you're talking about like the party, when you're talking about like, you know, the the okay, it's it's time to get free, let's let loose. That's Friday. You see that bleeds over a little bit into Saturday. You may go in Saturday, but by Sunday you're exhausted. It's like, okay, I I, I must rest. Uh but this is because energetically the fire here on this planet, the passion is tied into this day today. Now, I'm not saying that's like that in other planetary systems. I'm not saying that that's not what that's what's going on everywhere. I'm saying that right here, they have when I say they, this is the collective and, and how the energy is being guided in the collective have made this planetary system the upstart, like the, the main thing, the go to especially in any kind of Western society. As you know, that the Statue of Liberty is actually a symbol of Venus, right? So any of the, the well, actually, you know what? It's really Mithras, but this becomes tricky because Mithras is basically the, the cognate of when the, it shifts from a female to a male. This is hardly ever a cop that because these many of these energies are all of them are androgynous by nature friday has this androgynous energy to it and you're going to see see why in a minute also it's big on the name thing meaning friday as a day or venus as a planet or entity or whatever you want to call it is synonymous also with assuming many different names and titles trying to get as many names and words as possible and and it's because obviously with the power, if it can be named, then it can be controlled to a certain degree. Because it's like when you have something's cord or cable or vibration, it can be controlled to a certain degree. This is why their Qigong masters and Nigong masters, their videos are on YouTube, and they show how they can they can get the net of your body, right? Like and get it all into a string and start tugging it and start manipulating who you are based on the field or the net that's around the field. And this is basic. This is a course about frequency. This is about being able to see frequency. But when you know frequency and know what it is, it's a sound, it's a vibration. So when someone's able to tune into your sound and your vibration, they also have some manipulation and control over your field. Okay, so these are, these are the ancient arts. So with Inanna having that going on, which is the awareness of the Emmys or the awareness of having these words of power. Let me just uh, move this out of my way. There's a lot of distraction coming over from the side of the screen. Let me see here. Okay. I see why. Let me, let me just shift this to one. Now, so I'm just like seeing all this stuff going on over here. I'm like, what is going on? It's just the, the windows are shifting because I'm on window two. All right. So we got to go into this gently because again, this is also, it's so key to a person's existence being aware of this particular energy and how it's been working through the planet and how it's been working inside of you and why at times you may find yourself stagnant. All of that has to do with what I'm explaining today. So if you found yourself stagnant at some point, which generally a large percentage of human beings will find themselves stagnant at a certain point because of the design, how all of this is set up. And this is why it's important for you to know the design, turning off some other communication devices here. And then when you're reprogramming your consciousness and reprogramming your space and your environment, you'll know what energies are bringing what. So you'll know what to bring into the space. If you get too much of something happening, then you know, okay, that's too much of that. You'll be able to do your own per ankh, as uh, uh, I think that's our brother Layla Africa, a rise in wholeness, uh, put this works together, which are very similar to f f feng shui or the African version, if you may. <laughs> somebody, you can't text me, stop getting distracted. <laughs> I got somebody text me, stop getting distracted. This is hilarious. Okay, so what I'm getting to here is, is that this, these are very, um, this is a very uncomfortable energy, okay? 
this is a very uncomfortable uh, situation. And I can only express things how they are based on if this is energy that's also going through me. And it is for me getting very uncomfortable on a consistent basis to constantly deal with all of the baby energies that are always at play, how people have a certain level of maturity in certain places and then other places, they're just totally inexperienced. And we'll say it that way, that in some areas they excel in a great way and then other areas they're just like, they don't know anything. They're totally inexperienced. And what that imbalances causes is it causes first an outset that you know what you're doing, you know what you're talking about, but then on another level, it's like you have no clue of what's happening. And so you got to look at in your life, what are the primary aspects of how I exist? We know food is one of those. We know shelter is one of those. And then not too far after that from breathing and all the big ones comes relationships. It's right up there in the top five. That if the relationships that we're choosing to have with others are circumstantial. This means by through a series and through circumstances, this is why you're with this person. It didn't have anything to do with that you actually knew who the person really was, that you had already invested time and energy in, ex in exploring them to see if you two work together, if something, if you got, if you were complimented by their flaws, and at the same time, their their strengths helped your flaws, and if that was the perfect flow before. You even decided to go into the deeper aspects like a conjugal soul tying, right? Which is when you have any kind of uh, uh, sexual relationship with somebody, your energy becomes entwined with theirs like a spiral. As you're generating with this person, just like a coil, it begins to spiral and it becomes twined together. And then at a certain point, if you feel like that that's not somehow what you want to do anymore, it doesn't become so easy to untwine that. And then also that energetics of that being is still on you. And they've talked about this a lot with this whole, you know, breaking these relationship ties and that kind of stuff, cleansing yourself from relationships that you've been in. Because once the sexual thing starts or the sexual thing starts, which is today, six, once that starts, now you're going to intertwine with the being and with the situation. So you can also say then that this is the world serpent. The world serpent. This is a term that's used in many occult books as a reference to the chief energy that is going through the planet. Like if somebody is supposed to have any kind of force, i.e. kundalini or power, money, currency, any kind of fuels, it's all tied into the world serpent. And they say the serpent is very symbolic to a zigzag. That it's, it's a curve. It's not a straight line. It's a wavelength. See, a straight line is to indicate virtually unmovable. It, it's, not, it's not a wave. Waves are the ones, like if you do music, waves are the ones that move up and down. When there's no sound, it's just straight. So this zigzag also is synonymous with another way up the mountain. If you ever noticed that if you try to climb a mountain straight on, it could be difficult, if not impossible. You cannot climb Mount Everest straight on. It hits this, you know, this straight wall. And then you got to go around. So two, if you're building a road up a mountain, you're not going to build that road straight up into the mountain. That, that's not, it's not going to work. Whatever you're trying to drive up that mountain is going to be going like this. So you got to zigzag the road. And you'll see it. They'll keep carving around the mountain to go eventually all the way to the top. Now, of course, it takes longer, but at least you get there. Okay, so this is predominantly how the energy in your body is governed and functions. And then there is an assignment like, so what correlates to that energy in this planet? And that is Venus. This is where the passion, as I said, comes from, the fire, the desires. This is the lady in the red dress from the Matrix. This is also, as we talked about yesterday, about just the aspect of Venus having to work her way up 
through the whole procession of the gods, through methods in which, you know, whatever it takes to actually get to the top. That's Venus's personality. So also just that ability of being young and free and all of that is what Venus loves the most. That's why a lot of these Venusian cities, they're having the toughest problem because Venus really wants to be free, but she's not free inside of the being's mind. Because what happens is when we invert this energy, it makes us have to go out and find pleasure from every single being that we encounter, which is virtually impossible, especially if those beings are also doing it too, where everybody's coming out looking for the same energy. Who's going to be giving that energy? If everybody wants to receive, who's going to be giving? So this is why words like freedom and even freeze, but we'll talk about freedom exists and why they use this word a lot in the, in the U S and Western cultures, freedom, freedom, liberty, freedom, freedom, freedom. And they do that for a reason as an, as a cultist, because freedom in itself is a paradoxical word. The word free as it stands means basically a flow, a breeze, a spring. But when you put domes over it, that is where also we get our word dominion, which means governed. So it's like an oxymoron right away. You do things that are supposed to set you free or be expressions of the freedom that you gained. And then the result of what you did somehow becomes your entrapment. So let's speak real here. You could have a child and the child is the ultimate state of freedom. Like their parents will tell you, hey, you can't go. And when you're younger, you can, no, definitely not going to sleep with nobody. No sexes and all this kind of stuff. No. By the way, there is a disclaimer on this chat today. So if you have kids, you may, if they're at the level of comprehension, you may want to move them away or listen later. So when we're saying this freedom, as we're, as we're seeing in action, immediately causes some level of dominion. This action that I take to actually do what you don't tell me what to do. Mama, I could go and be with who I want. This is an act of freedom. So then you get with the, or, or being free, right? And then you get with the person. Then you do the thing. You feel so free. And then now you're pregnant. And then now the dominion starts to set in because now you cannot be just free as you want it to be. Now you got to start taking care of this baby. Now you got to start, you know, giving these vitamins. Now you got to start doing your breathing. If you're going to do that right, your lamas and all that. You got to start changing your clothes. You got to start taking the pills, the, the prenatal vitamins. You got to start doing all these things that that's not necessarily a, a direct cognate of free. <laughs> that's now responsibility. So freedom as it is, and also this word freeze, because the Z-E or the Z in English language actually closes anything it's on, the, it, it's on the back of. That's why we have A to Z. That is the cabal or the cable. The A connects to the Z. That makes a, a circle or a cable, right? And then that's how, the, that's, that's how the language is put together. So you have, in this case, this Z on the back of freeze and what do you see then? It's stuck. It's frozen. It can't go anywhere. It can't do anything. So this is the energy. It can be free or it can be stagnant. If it's free, abundance, wealth, joy, love, happiness on a consistent basis. If somehow it comes under dominion, all of that will wither away. Just as they say in the cult, when you remove this planet, you remove the funkin dating component also of the planet. All planets that are existing in that. And then the planets descend generally into war. Only war. And trees stop budding and insects stop. Birds stop chirping. Animals stop cohabiting with each other. That is the world serpent. So because everybody has a part of this in them and it's tied into 
how they're going to be able to thrive, how they're going to be able to create things, how motivated they feel about themselves. All this kind of stuff is tied into this one energy that generally has already gone through several processes of thinking that it was going to be free, like even joining up for the United States Club, Land of the Free, Home of the Brave. You know, you sign a club, sign up for the club, pledge allegiance to the flag. And this is what I was saying also about the difference between a concave pentagram, like a pentagram that looks like what you see in nature, like how flowers and roses and that are, like when they grow in that pentagramal shape, that is Venus. There's an imitator, though, and it draws everything with straight lines. The, the, the uh, concave pentagram is the original perfect five pentagram. It is the holy cut. The straight line pentagram is the plagiarization. The symbol is corrupted the moment you make a straight line because it's about a curve. And when, so when you see this straight line pentagram like you see on the flags in the United States, that's the symbol of when the, I don't know if you want to call them a brotherhood or a sisterhood. They seem to be really confused. Have taken this symbol and created a cult around it, and which is the cult of Mithras. The Red Caps, the Smurfs, the Pyrogeans. And then he erected this idea of freedom and liberty out on the harbor. Hey, look, everybody, we're bearing. This is, this is really, uh, this, is, this is Venus. But really, it's Mithras. Meaning that trying to say, well, yeah, it, it, it's, it's about the Mother Mary, but actually it's really about her son. And people don't catch that really spiritually. That the Funkin' Dating component, Venus, et cetera, bananas, all of these different things are coming, like sand dollars, anything that has, a, has the concave pentagramal shape, when you get down on it into a microscope or an electron microscope, all that is coming from one energetic field. This planet is tracing this concave pentagram out in the sky every eight years. The Mayans were looking at it as a time symbol. All ancient cultures are aware of it in relation to Earth. That's what I was saying to make sure, as a disclaimer, you realize I'm talking about in relation to Earth. Because if you go to other spaces, you're not getting in that same order of what Venus has going on on this planet, along with all of the other entities that are here and the cohabiting. You get a whole different thing happening. It's always important to be aware of that because it keeps you from getting stuck in something. Once again, you think you're in love with knowledge and wisdom. Now you go and bite off this apple and you think it's the only thing out there. And then all of a sudden, now you're stuck again. Now you didn't get the freedom that you were looking for because you're stuck back into another dogma. So realize also how not only paradoxical, but how 360 degree this level of awareness that we're supposed to have constantly is. It must constantly be. We have to be aware of this within ourselves, others, external things, internal things, and things we know not. You have to have a 360 degree awareness of what these signs and symbols mean. Or at any point, you just misinterpret it. You fail at the level of awareness. You cannot solve the riddle. And then once again, you remain in this planet. You remain in this system, still not knowing that your energetic system is tied directly into your relationships. They'll try to bring that to you another way around. Now we have all these psychologists and people that want to be relationship counselors, but they don't know anything about the story. But they do know some techniques. And they tell you some things that actually connect into this about. One of my notes here says that. Notice how. If one of the key fundamental parts of our entire reality is our relationships. And our relationships are in chaos or in a muck or are premature. What does that mean that our world is going to actually be like? So while we may be running off talking about a new banking system, now we need to do a permaculture. We need to do all these different things that people have so many ideas about. They're not seeing sometimes that. But unless you're going to do all that by yourself, you're still going to need to link with other people. And that means that you're going to be in a relationship with them. So look how this works. If you're going to do anything massive and big, you're going to have to learn how to work with other people. So right away, if you're with someone that doesn't even want you to be around other people, 
there becomes the first leg of your journey of how to work your way through that. Then on top of that, that could actually be a benefit for certain people, meaning being with someone that doesn't want to, they don't want you to be around nobody else. You're going to just be around them or you're going to do what you are doing and nothing else. That may work for people for a moment in time because you get a lot of stuff done. You learn more about yourself. Relationship thing kind of settle in. You're not kind of super hot on the passion where you just can't keep your eyes off the person and your hands off the person. And then you start actually working with yourself, figuring out who you are. And then you go through a budding process and then you wake up again. Now, what has to change in relationships is the partners have to be aware now of when that change is occurring and they have to be forthcoming at either making those changes or moving on so that the being can make those changes. Now, you don't see that in relationship dynamics at all. This is also why we're stuck. The reason why, again, is it's like saying that, well, the mother, in this case, or we could say more or less the daughter, is ready to move on, has already done what her purpose is for. But now we want to keep her to actually do somebody else's job. And I think this is very, very interesting to even have this conversation and be thinking about this on this way. But if you think about yourself as a total being, you have this time, this passion, this energy that fuels you through the cosmos. Now, you have these other energies. These other energies are like one holds knowledge. The other one knows everything about books. The other one's really giving and caring. So you have those other energies. But this energy specifically, which is tied directly into your creativity. That energy, it has to be free. It has to constantly be attracted. It cannot feel like that somehow is stagnant or else all of those other aspects of your existence, they just come tumbling down. There's no fuel for those other aspects of the existence. When you don't have the passion within yourself of why you're even doing something in the first place. So when we think about this planet. And we think about solutions. We come to ourselves and realize that not only are we seeing this happen, we're seeing this happen on nation scales where now the nations are now being like they want to be everybody wants to be free. Now they can't go anywhere. And all this kind of thing is happening because, as you'll see, tomorrow is Saturn is the Saturnalian rule. And as we said, the negative aspects of Saturn is like that. It wants to no, you don't go anywhere. You just sit here and entertain me and listen to what I have to give you. You shouldn't want to really be going anywhere with anybody else. You can be with me. You should, I, I, I'm your only one. This is all the Saturnalian, negative Saturnalian kind of binding because the binding of the Saturnalian is like, it's very old. So it wants to, you know, just, it wants to smother young things. It's a cognate of David or Draven in the Bible wanting to have a virgin next to him just to keep him warm. And truthfully, again, when we're doing all this externally, it's not going to it's not going to fulfill you because you're a cosmos. You need to actually figure this out internally. Then it replicates with how you're starting your relationships, what you're saying to people about what you're committing to. You start taking a moment to state your boundaries, the things that you will and that you will not do. You start to give yourself the time to assess if this person's even going to be able to be responsible like that. Think about this. People will say anything to be with you, but then once they're with you, now they start going back on everything that they said. So it's like we have to practice more awareness in the relationships that we're carrying on. Now, remember also just because, you know, the, the sexual relationships are being with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, that, that's only one kind of relationship. We have other relationships. We have these friends that are around us. And this same rule should apply for all relationships. This is where things have gotten really hazy on earth because it has no real guidelines beyond, beyond the Catholic structure of marriage. Like, did you think that the Catholics was going to design a system that was going to be harmonic and instrumental for those who entered into it? Do we think that the, 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 the Catholic system and structure of marriage 
actually existed in the ancient times with the ancestors? Do we think that it's okay actually to even possess someone else? Because that's actually a form of slavery. When you say someone belongs to you and actually nobody else, now, first of all, this is just all out heresy because none of this belongs to any of us. Truth be told, either it belongs to all of us or it doesn't belong to any of us. You pick which one. So when we take somebody, and this is the planet, the planet has been doing this, being the, the denizens on this planet have been doing this, and it is not the model of creation. It is not the model of abundance. How many seeds does this tree drop? And how many of those seeds does this ground fertilize if those conditions are proper? All of them. So is the tree saying, well, I only want you to do certain ones or I only want you to be with certain ones. And here's a lim here's the next limitation. No, it's saying all of them. And that's how it's existed in the billions, if not trillions or a countless amount of time. While this finite being who's becoming so decrepit in, under its laws and its rules and its government has systems installed. I'm talking about the human being has systems of thought installed that are directly counterproductive to what we know now to be spiritual growth. So that's why it's at a depth level situation and a depth level subject. It has its low points. That's obviously what we talked about yesterday and has its highs and it has its mids. To keep this energy balanced, it must be kept flowing. Anytime the energy is at its extremes, it gets stagnant. It becomes either too much or not enough. And so one of the things why I was, why I was thinking about this today and getting this message prepared is I realized that a lot of the things that we've developed already all need to be put into one specific thing that serves one specific purpose since we're in this time that we're in now. And how that is displayed or presented to someone, because obviously when we open up sites like eneology.com, university.com, uh, secretenergy.com, and all these different websites, they're like beta first. We work with it. We see what the technical issues are. We see what the, the GUI issues, what people are having a problem with, what they don't like, what they do like. And you got to do that somewhere. But it's not to just keep that life, it's to create something that is basically a synthesis of all of that. Bringing what is most important. What is most important right now first is that you know yourself. If you don't know yourself, you don't need to be spending time with anybody else. You're just gonna throw other people off. If you really care about them, you would move away from them and go and learn about yourself. Because you coming in not knowing about yourself and then getting hijacked all the time with somebody else's ideas is only just keeping you confused. That's why we encourage, there's materials there now, there's the resonance every day, learn your number. You can get this information, it is there for you. Sunday, which is uh, not tomorrow, but the next day, Sunday, we're gonna have key makers on. We're gonna start ask, answering questions based on the person's etiology path. And from that, you'll see just how much more specific the answers become versus when someone asks a general question like, what do I do about X and my child doing this? That all depends on what path you're on because first we need to see how you're even processing the reality. We can't just assume, hey, this is what everybody needs to do. That's why we can give general pointers, but they seem open-ended. They often seem like things that people say, well, I tried that before, it didn't work. So it's about first knowing who the person is. So it's in the same structure, we teach you who you really are. That's what eneology is doing. And then we learn more about your interest from you learning more about your interest. We set our interests these days, we're like, well, I'm interested in, in yoga, I like meditation, and then we're clicking all these different things, and are those really our interests? Are those things that it's like shoes in a closet? I only have 10 shoes, so I'm just going to pick one of these ones that I like as the best. But what if you had a thousand shoes? What if you had a countless amount of shoes? Which ones would you really wear? So it's about asking that question yourself. What are you really interested in? Not the same thing everybody else is interested in, but what really actually turns it on for you? What subject is it really? And then they select that subject 
And it starts deep diving on that subject even more. And then it's pairing people with a new dynamic of conjugal relationships, meaning that these dualistic one-on-one -on -one kind of engagements, they, the structure works great for certain things, but other things it does not. It doesn't mean that you have to have what is like a, what they call a sexual relationship with every single person that you meet. If that's something that you're struggling with right there, that's all a part of still going back to square one and figuring out and loving yourself and, and doing more with yourself, figuring out how your creative energy works. But then when you're done with doing that, you're going to want to come in and work with others who are either on their, on their path of doing that and aware of that or have done that. So that way you can keep building with the person because the person knows themselves. And if a person knows themselves, it's like having a being that, because human resource is the greatest resource, having a being that is completely aware of how to use the equipment that they're in. And then now we can learn who each other is. We can learn about each other. I can see where you're, you're, uh, what you like to do and what you don't like to do is even offset by what I like to do and what I don't like to do. So I already know if this relationship and this connection that we're going to have is going to actually be instrumental for both of us before I even get started. Because, see, our elders were already doing this. Our ancestors were already doing this. They made sure that when they paired something up, because they were looking at the spiritual aspect of things, when they paired something up, that they were going to pair it up so that it actually increases and it grows. It's like in farming, you don't plant things together that tear each other down. You plan things together that support each other and make each other grow. So what I'm saying right now is in your life, and this doesn't mean that you go and get rid of the person that you're with or anything like that. This is not what I'm talking about. That's why I had to put a disclaimer on this conversation for immature people. This is something that we have to pioneer in our own spaces. First of all, this is something that we need to recognize needs to be done. If we're still rolling, no matter on the, on the same structure of how things are, are designed with how our relationships are. Then, like I said yesterday, we're still going to be dealing with the same world. To meet a new world, to open things up more, to really want to engage on beside what a person is, wants to show you about them. See, this is another. If I go to any even dating app, I'm only seeing what the person wants to show me and wants to tell me. So this becomes already loaded because technically the person is only going to show me the best of who they are. They're going to show me all the pictures that got the good filters. They're going to say conscious, high vibe, entertainment, blah, blah, blah. Anything that sounds good that they put together, hashtag emoji, stuff they've copied over two years ago that they found out that was all put together really well to make them seem like they're the best package. Like a store, you're walking down the hall or an electronic store, the best package is going to tend to win if the products are the same. <laughs> but is that really what you're getting into? And think about this. Now, when the person does that, they, want, they feel that they want to attract someone that is going to love this person. But that's not actually who they really are. So they're already setting themselves up for failure. And then, of course, when a person gets with them, they may concede for the, 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 that passion initially. They may concede that, you know what, why not? Let's just, but after day one, it's like, you don't even look anything like these pictures. You're not about high vibe. Yeah, I'm out of here. And it equals this same level of entanglement. And then now all these beings have gotten entangled. Because you can see like in these festivals, you know, they go to the Burning Man. They all get all entangled. But who is really aware of who they truly are and is able to govern that properly and also able to, not just like, cause you got some of them, they play, you know, they play these instruments and they do all this stuff. So they just like superstars. They just running through every single person, like leaving their tangle all over the place. And then in the end, nobody is getting worked with. Mean that there's nothing for that other person that said, they said, well, you know, I used to be with him. <laughs> but what did you build with him? What, did you guys make a song? Did y'all develop some things? Did, did you grow from that before even that person chose to move on? If a person chooses to move on, that's a person's choice. 
But what is your choice is whether or not you had grown from that because you would have been able to see that in the beginning. And this is what we want to make sure, especially since we can't say that we're experts at everything. So this is what we want to make sure that we're learning is the dynamics to relationships, which is what our elders was trying to teach us. Because who you decide to yoke yourself with and under what terms, this is another thing. Terms is there are certain beings like let's say, for instance, on the nine paths, when you come to an eight. Like generally, if a woman comes to an eight, the eight's not going for like, well, you're going to tell me what to do and all that. that. That's not the eight's personality. So the woman even ha has the opportunity at that point. We're just speaking in this context to either accept this from the eight or move on. OK, now there are some women and we're just saying this in this normal context that like eights, like the person who's assertive, knows what they want a little bit more on the I'm, I'm running the show. I got you. I'm, I'm, I'm protecting this side. So it doesn't mean that just because the way that the eight is that the eight needs to change the way that he is in order to blend well with the society of today. That, that, that's not going to work. And that's actually what many males and females have done. They've changed off of their natural way of how they are to this common denominator of what the reality says is how you're supposed to be when really there's somebody for everybody. But if you end up getting with the wrong person or you end up getting in the wrong relationships, this is going to actually hamper your growth. But this is also saying, well, everybody knows that. Duh. How do we fix it? We fix it by one. When the person is now instructed about themselves, they must agree at some point by themselves, this is, this, is, this is me. Like when you read something and it says something like, you always root for the underdog. That's me. Like since five years old, I'm looking at the team not winning and I'm like, I'm going to join that team. I'm looking at the ones that are being beat down and downtrodden. I'm like, I'm going to represent them. So those are maxims. Those are when you agree that you are something and you know that that is like in the fiber of who you are. Right. So this is what it even says about my path in genealogy. Now, if another path, it says for them that you're amongst the high life all the time. You don't care much for lower things. Right. Just something like this. I'm just giving some examples here. Pairing these two people up unless that being wants to transmute that trait feels like you know what i don't i don't really want to be like that i really don't it's something i came in with and i can see where it came from i can see how my mother has it but i'm ready to transmute that so then it's beneficial for that person to get with somebody who is like that because seeing them in action and being with them and entwining with them is going to give you that trait but if you don't want to be like that really and that's just how you are you're you're working the higher station and that's just who you are Getting with somebody like that is going to be debilitating to who you are because you're going to constantly feel like, especially if you like that person, that you're the bad one or you're the one not thinking the way that that, that, that the best way to think is because you think so high of the person. And that's why relationships generally need to remain balanced in order to stay functional. That's that's the truth to this matter. We've talked about this now twice today. The relationships must stay balanced. You must make sure that a person's impediment, because that's where we plug into each other. We found out that in eneology, that each person had some great things, and then they had some stuff that, you know, we call them debilities, right? It's just not your strong suit. And for a while, I pondered, why not have a, just a perfect being? Now, you can create that by learning all the paths and being able to load in the overmind. However, just standardly, there, each path has debilities. Each planet has a debility. Even Venus, she's great at many things, and there's other stuff she's just not so good at handling. But the debilities are there so that we fit into each other. Because if there was only perfect human beings, there's no reason for a world. It would just be one being. A perfect being is just a, sing a singular being. That's it. It's not anything outside of that being. That's not this creation. This creation is that each being has something unique and makes it different. So when we're going through this university, 
we have to learn that, first of all, that maxim means, let me find out what makes this person so different. It's definitely there. Everybody has it, just as sure as you have a fingerprint. Also, it's way more instrumental to learn what makes you different first. Once you find out how to unlock your uniqueness and how you determine who you truly are, then you're able to go to someone else and be like, okay, if you don't know how to do it, or this person clearly has discovered it, or you can give them advice. And then once you know that, you can see if, does this person's uniqueness complement my uniqueness or does it degrade my uniqueness? Because the worst thing that we would want to do to each other is actually uh, put, our, put each other into a position where it's not increasing each other because that, that's not even the meaning of love when you think about it. When you get with somebody you actually get with them to actually increase everything. Even relationships, when you get in relationships, you get in there to increase everything because everything decreases, it just pulls apart. So the whole intention anyway in the first place was to grow. So that's how also you keep the fire lit, as they call it. How you always keep the passion in those spaces and in those moments is still each person being aware, hey, this is what we complement each other on this is what I'm here to actually do in this space. And that's what also helps me keep what I'm doing. And then also we start thinking how, especially now in these times that we're living in, people are sitting now at the house. They're extremely frustrated from all different levels. It's even hard to tune out and to uh, tune out of just the overall vibration and the reality and tap into a love vibration and a let me hold you, let me kiss you. These may be our last days together. <laughs> Maybe, you know, you call it, you know, this, you know, somebody you always want to be with. Like, hey, you know what? If, if we die, we die together. Like, why not have it going into some massive level of crescendo for you as you're getting more serious about your own life rather than being a form of stagnancy? The answer is, is that these energies are very specific. It doesn't matter what situation we're dealing with, what time we're actually in. They're always going to work the same way. If you block the current and you block the flow, you'll end up getting less. If you do that for somebody or they do that to you, you guys are going to get less in the relationship. To get more, you identify who you are. Then when you find out who you are, you can then learn who the person is. This is all stuff that you can actually do even while being in the relationship. You got to learn how to fix the plane while you're flying. <laughs> This is no time to land and start over again from the runway. You have to fix the plane while flying sometime, genius. So this means that you can start this now. You're at home. You start reading about your path. You start reading about who you are, learning about who you are, identifying who you are, accepting who you are. And then as that loads, go learn about the other person that you so-called love. And then when you read something about them, don't be reading about it like those are things that you want to change. Yeah, they're like that. That's what they need to change. Then you just realize how immature you are. How are you going to change another person's path? Who are you? Now you have to look at how they are and do you need to, add, you need to, you need to be an adult and tell yourself whether or not you can accept that. And if you cannot, you need to state, restate your terms. And then that is going to make you a great being. Finally going into it like that. That's why most people remain like children, because they cannot do those kind of things. Especially, again, when, you, when you're entwining with someone, it becomes very difficult to say anything to them. There's so many triggers there. There's so much pain. There's so much past. There's so much you did this and you did that. That's why these people are not going anywhere. They're like crabs in a bucket. But you have to be the one, like I said yesterday, when giving up on... Well, is this even going to work? Is this even going to pan? Is this even going to pan out? Is this world going to even? If you're not going to go into that, and you're going to feel like that you still have some solutions in this, you still are ready to go to another stage in all of this, then you're going to adapt to something like this, because this is what changes things. Things don't change if you just keep doing it in the same way. I can say that over and over again. But what is a different way then? Is a different way reading another book? Man, unless this book is the ultimate way of changing things, it's just another book. 
we have to read about ourselves. And like I said, this system, and I'm just going to say this and I'm done. Remember that this system is like an algorithm. When you come into this reality, and I think we just lost uh, one, of the powers, one of the power things down there. I heard it blow up. But that's why I'm on backup power. We'll see how long this lasts. And actually, that brings me to the end of, the, uh, end of this point so we can jump into the meditation today. But I'm, what I'm concluding with here is that I want you to not think about what I said today. I want you to feel what I said today. I want you to look inside of yourself, especially during these meditations. And I want you to see where your energy is, especially in relation, in, in relation to your relationships. And I want you to ask yourself, is it time for an overhaul of the relationship structure that you were given to that, that was given to you by how the system functions? And if some of your relationships, if not many of them are actually circumstantial, meaning that you just happened to that person met you at this point, but you didn't do no investigation. And then if that is the story, then now you need to take time and do the investigation about yourself. This is a process. This is a procedure. And then once you do the investigation about yourself, you can now then go and look. You can go and look into their relationships, their relationship with themselves. And then you can make a sober estimate of because don't go to this person. If you see things that you don't you cannot tolerate. Do not go to this person trying to change these things. Ask yourself, did you see them do these things? Did they always express themselves from this outlet and wanting to be a part of that? Or did they say this is what they wanted to get rid of? That's how you'll know without asking anybody or causing any confusion or conflicts or whatever. That's how you'll know what you're dealing with. And you'll then be able to be mature because if you don't go back into your love box, and then you're like, you know what, I just, because we together, I just accept it. You're still going to be a baby. You, you're not learning how to be an adept adult yet. You're not learning how to say exactly what you want. You're not learning how to tell be other beings what you want. So how is it that you can actually go into the cosmos and try to command ether? If you can't tell a simple person that is around you that while you may think they're hindering you, you probably are hindering them exactly how you feel about the next level that you need to get to, especially since it looks like time draws nigh. Meaning that if you don't have something inside of you that makes you want to thrive and make, makes you want to survive, that's affecting your immunity. Your immunity is your willingness to live. It is the sign of being a supreme being. Supreme beings want to be in this. They're not depressed on this low state of consciousness, on this low vibratory frequency. That, that's something else. We call that something else. So that's what I'm getting at here is that realize that this energy, while many have been calling upon it, do you know how many people keep calling upon Venus and calling upon funkin' dating components, calling upon having more children, fertility, I want love, give me a heart. Every time they do a heart emoji, they call upon this. Every time they make a pentagram concave, they call upon this. Every time they pick a flower and pick a rose, they call upon this. But do they really know how to treat that? It's even symbolic. People pluck a rose, but it dies when you do that. Once you pluck the rose, it's dying. Why can't you just leave it there and admire its beauty? No, because you want to take it. You want to put it in your house and you want it as a piece of yourself that you know is going to be finite. I'm going to put these dead. I put these roses here and they're dying in a few days. They're going to be dead, but it's OK, because in those few days, I'll get a chance to enjoy them. That's Saturnalian. That's the distorted aspects of the Saturnalian cage. So we free ourselves from that. We free ourselves when we're no longer willing to accept these type of terms of a relationship that has been imposed on us by society where we don't get a chance to know ourselves before we're already making agreements, oaths and pacts and doing all sorts of rituals with somebody. And always remember, it's never too late. <laughs> if you're listening right now, you made it right on time. Don't do anything extreme. The extremes, avoid the extremes. Gradually learn more about yourself and come to an awareness of who you are. Go through the process of the healing. 
Go internal at times. Don't lash out at the person. Don't use this kind of stuff as ammunition. This is where I see you're like this. Ah, because you're still doing the same thing. You're just a little kid. You're trying to find more ammunition. This is about going inside and saying, okay, I see what's happening here. I see what's happening here. And you'll feel so empowered as you're making adult decisions. And then the energy will be yours again. Because through this process, this is how people give up their energy. And this is why we were saying that this choosing of the Easter or Easter, Easter, Ishtar, that's Friday. So you're going to choose from here to the end of April, somewhere in there, what energy you're going to be rocking with for the next cycle. So that's why any of these kind of things, I mean, people send me these emails, don't send me emails about bad news. I don't want to hear it. Now it's three days and the internet cut off. Good. I get some rest. It's always another story. 5G, it's breaking everybody out. It's causing coronavirus. But 5G networks were first installed in Las Vegas, Nevada, completely, completely. And they have the lowest amount of cases. It's just false, false positives all over the place. It's going outside in that toxic relationship because this is the other thing. If you don't know how to govern the relationship thing, you're going to have all types of relationships. Relationships are not even just physical, right? Linkings and connections are not just physical. You can link with news outlets. You can link with other collective states of consciousness. You can link with all types of things. But if you haven't learned in your relationship, how to determine whether something is empowering you. I cannot watch stuff that does not empower me, but for a certain period, for a certain use. And before I'm back to empowerment, if I'm going to watch something or I'm going to watch nothing at all and I'm going to use my consciousness for empowerment. So having your dexterity, this is the term, having your ability ambidextry, being able to actually utilize both aspects of yourself in order to bring you into balance starts with you learning who you are and how your power functions and then you yourself taking your power plug whatever you want to call it and then choosing where you want it to actually be uncircumstantial unapologetic so there you have it we have 15 minutes here if you may of meditation we're going to see what happens sometimes i feel like that maybe the it could be the the format that this audio track is in that may cause the issue because it looks like to me that the whole transmission went through without us getting interrupted but all the time it seems like when i turn that for specific file on so i'm going to turn on what i know is an mp3 file file today and we're going to try that and see if that actually allows it to broadcast because the other one's an aiff and that could be causing an encoding issue so that's what i mean you even got to know about this kind of silly stuff in a world of endless possibility and endless potential so this is why it's so important for you to be on point with yourself. So here we go. We're going to take a moment for everyone to get themselves seated properly into their meditative pose. If you did join in line today, wow, it's 189 of us. So it is actually growing. I see some new faces. I see some existing faces. Thank you so much for joining into this. This is us in this co-creation. Like I'm here. I'm just going on about stuff that you already know. I'm just reinstilling the facts about the cosmos and how it works. We're doing that also because it is a very powerful social exercise for all of us. We want to continue to increase that and create other spaces where we can do these things even beyond the meditation, because obviously we're going to have to move on from something beside this meditation. But I just want you to know out there that I do feel what you feel. I do have the same experiences that you have. I am learning just like you're learning. And I also have things that I still am succumb to at times and think about at times that are a direct result of how I was bought up and how I was raised and what happened and what really went on in that. And but I'm also a being that I has been spending so much time in getting to a balance, getting to a, a, a point in my existence where I realized that the knowledge and the wisdom that I had was something that I wanted, not something that was just given to me because there's a there's a big difference. If somebody just feeds you knowledge, 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 and you don't want that knowledge, that knowledge is not serving you. You have to know how to put that knowledge away. Just like they say, now you learn. Now you're in that last pot, that last spot. Now you must unlearn because everything about the previous level will be set up a certain way. And you'll have to be sound on that, firm on that. 
until it's time to make another change to another level. I found that flabbergasting at times until I started welcoming it. I Meaning I used to get to these points and I was like, this is it. <laughs> Listen, this is it. I don't even know anything else. This is all the truth to the whole thing. And then no more than three months later, be on to something totally different and be like, man, what happened to that? And I was like, man, just keep moving. That is the nature of this. The only thing promised is change. And so let's keep working with our stability because since things are changing all the time, we want to make sure still that we're on something stable. And then when things do change, we want to make sure we're using the power of change to make things change into what we want them to be. And that's why you're coming into more awareness with yourself. So here we go. Go to intonation is on point. I see the cameras are on. Thank you so much. Let me just line this up really quick. All right, I guess this is going to do that today. So let me just do this really briefly. We're going to go into today's meditation and the exercise is feeling the energy inside of you. Feeling, you know, where it wants to go, where it wants to be, what it wants to explore. You know, all the times that it had a great time. And you realize that, that that is all inside of you. Those are the memories that you keep. Those are the precious things that you hold. And they should always remain at the forefront of your consciousness. And also think about, you know, when circumstances started changing themselves, you know, what we talked about today and how a lot of this rings true to maybe how your freedom became captive, but how you can set it free by also making those actions within yourself and seeing the things around you that you've been holding and then just let it go. Learn about it and then let it go if it's not actually serving who you want to be. There you are, tribe. So here we go. <laughs> 